All right, let's have a look at an electricity bill post solar. So we're gonna review a bill after a solar system's installed to show you how to understand where your solar savings are. G'day, I'm Eddie Springer, Springer Solar. As part of our Bill Hunter series, where we're explaining electricity bills and we're looking for the worst electricity bill in Queensland, we're going to review an electricity bill on a house that has had a solar system installed. So we do get a lot of questions after solar is installed as to why my electricity bill might still be high, what can I do to combat my high electricity usage, and understanding how the solar system is performing to determine whether the solar system is doing what it needs to do for you and, and how to best utilize that solar electricity. Certain roofs are limited in the amount of solar you can put on them, and some households have extremely high energy usage. So although you are getting achieving excellent solar savings, you may still have an electricity bill left over. You know, without a battery on your house, it can be hard to get your bill to zero. And on this electricity bill we're going to review, there are still significant charges on it. You know, I know this customer personally, it's actually my house. The usage there is due to pools, electric vehicle, and a household full of, um, you know, people that, that, that live day to day. The roof is limited for the amount of solar that we could put on the roof. So we're going to go through how to look at the energy savings and what the bill would be without solar to show you how to read your electricity bill. So on the first page, we have a general description of the property and a dollars or amount due. We're not really concerned about the amount due because there's a lot of different factors that go into that, whether it's monthly, whether it's quarterly, and there may be subsidies and things involved. So let's not worry about that just yet. So let's look at this electricity bill. We can see from the second page that the average daily usage is still 23 kilowatt hours. Okay, that, that may seem high, but there are a lot of different appliances that this, this client is still using or I'm still using. So let's dive into where these, this usage is coming from. This bill is a flat rate electricity bill with demand charges. So we can see for the period, the highest demand is 10 and a half kilowatts. So that's happening between four and 9 p.m. and it happened within the month of September. Now this would be due to electric vehicle being plugged in at the same time as probably the cooking or kitchen uh, is operating in that peak demand period. Really need to try and ensure that I'm not charging my vehicle between 4 and 9 p.m. per day so that that peak demand can be reduced down to maybe 3 or 4 kilowatts. Okay, that's a mistake that we're making in our household that's contributing to a $43 per month extra charge that could be reduced. The general usage here is 693 kilowatt hours. The billing rate is 25 cents. So this is the usage that we can attack as to trying to get that energy usage down. We can see our solar feed-in tariff down a bit lower. Okay, so total solar feed-in for this period is 420 kilowatt hours plus the 222. So 640 kilowatt hours of solar has been exported to the grid. When we divide that by the 30 days, we're exporting about 21 kilowatt hours of the solar system energy per day. It's equating to $53 on the bill. So you might think, gee, the solar system is not doing much. It's only generating $50 credit on the bill. Now that's not true. This is only the exported solar energy. There's a hell of a lot of other solar energy generated at this property that's reducing the consumption. And this is the solar electricity we don't see on the bill. My system at my property, about nine kilowatts of peak solar on the roof. So it'll generate on average about 45 kilowatt hours a day. Of that 45 kilowatt hours, we're exporting 21. So there's 24 kilowatt hours of electricity that my solar system is generating that is being self-consumed in the property that is reducing the bill. If we look at that 24 kilowatt hours a day and we multiply it by the 25 cents, there's a further $188 of savings 
that we're not seeing on this electricity bill, that the solar system is contributing to the reduction in the bill. So if I was to turn the solar system off, we'd have an additional charge of $188 in our kilowatt charges up here, and we'd also be removing this $53. So this nine kilowatt solar system is contributing to about $230 of energy savings per month. Okay, these are significant savings that are not always showing up on the bill. So when you are looking at electricity bill post solar and you're only seeing the solar credits, that's only part of the story. We need to look at how the system's performing. That may be via the solar system production data via your solar app, or knowing how big the solar system is and getting an average on what it should be doing for your area and orientation to determine how much overall saving is there for your bill. So when we're looking at further savings for this bill, we know that there is still energy usage here. So 693 kilowatt hours of further electricity that's being used overnight. And we're also got these exports down here of solar electricity being exported to the grid. Some of it at 10 cents, some of it at 5 cents. This is just based on the plan for AGL uh, for this location. If we wanna reduce these 693 kilowatt hours, we can store some of this electricity that's being exported in a battery. As the cost of batteries come down, and as this cost of electricity goes up, batteries become a lot more viable for allowing you to get energy, extra energy savings. So we're exporting about 21 kilowatt hours a day. So we could store, you know, half of that in a Tesla Powerwall 2. We might be able to put in other battery types, but we do have the ability to store that energy and then reduce our overall kilowatt hours. Other measures we can make for this bill to reduce the dollar amount on it is shifting this demand out of this four to 9 p.m. period on weekdays and weekends. So getting our demand to be lower between that peak period. And for me, that's gonna be ensuring that our vehicle is never plugged in and charging between four and 9 p.m. on weekdays. You know, I need to ensure that vehicle's not plugged in during that period, we charge overnight and we will reduce this demand charge on the bill. So this is a energy usage bill with demand charges. If you were a residential customer with just a flat rate bill and you were looking at your kilowatt hour charges here and your solar exports down here, the way to reduce your energy consumption and your overall billing would be to try and shift more of that energy usage into a daytime period. So where you can shift your pool tariffs or any of those items that you were, are using overnight to the daytime, you will reduce your kilowatt hours, you'll also reduce your exports, but you're exporting to the grid at 10 cents and you're buying it back at 25 cents. So the more of that electricity you can shift into the daylight hours, the higher the savings for your bill. You know, utilizing your solar electricity during the day will give you the maximum benefit for your system on your bill. So there's plenty of savings to be made on any electricity bill. It's about knowing where your costs are coming from, how your electricity is being used to enable you to make those changes to get those bill savings. I'm Eddie Springer from Springer Solar. Thanks for your time while we do an in-depth analysis to electricity bills in Queensland. See you next time.